Hello and welcome to my September game pickups video. Now, throughout this month I've not actually gotten too many things, but I've got a couple of things that, in my opinion at least, are pretty interesting that I'm going to go through. Uh, I suppose the order that I'll do this video is I'll talk about the games I've got first, and then move on to the more potentially interesting stuff at the end. So, the first thing that I'm going to talk about that I got this month is actually Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Uh, you probably already know that I've picked this up this month because I've done an entire video where I unboxed the collector's edition of it and I've also done a full review of the game as well. So if you are wanting to know a more detailed opinion going through what I think about the game, you can always check that out after you've watched this video. I don't buy many collector's editions of games, in fact aside from this one I think the only other one I've got is the Pip-Boy edition of Fallout 4. Uh, so it's not something I normally partake in, so I have to be a big fan of whatever series it is to really consider doing that. Unlike with Fallout 4 as well, I actually think that this collector's edition was worth getting because the game itself blew me away. It's one of the best Tony Hawk games in the entire series, and I'm hoping that it gets a lot more additions made to it in the form of new levels and new characters and that sort of thing. So with me having got a collector's edition of this, it actually cost £90 and I got it from Game. Uh, so yeah, a pretty expensive one, but I think it was worth it in the end. Now the next game I got is a very, very recent one, and it's one that I've not actually played too much. But it's the new uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars game, which has Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Mario Galaxy in it. I've been waiting for quite a long time for these games to be released on the Switch. It was rumoured for a while to be happening, so I sort of expected it to happen at some point. Uh, but what was really good about this is that they announced it, and like two weeks later it actually came out. So it wasn't like we needed to wait to get our hands on this or anything, like it was pretty much instantly released. A lot of people online have been complaining about the way that these games are emulated. They're sort of saying that it has flaws that the original games didn't have. Uh, but from what I've experienced, they seem pretty solid, although I have noticed a couple of things that you wouldn't be able to see in the original. Stuff just like low poly models being clearly visible, where in the original it would have been too blurry to properly see that. But yeah, to be honest, I'm just happy that we've finally got these three classic games on the Switch, because like I say, I've been waiting to play these games on new hardware for such a long time now. Another thing about this is that this makes me particularly excited about the prospect of getting a Zelda 35th Anniversary Collection, which could potentially include all of the 3D Zelda games on the Switch. Now, that's something that I would definitely like to see, and I hope they're working on it. This game cost £45, and I got it from Amazon, uh, which was one of the first places you could actually pre-order it, because I wanted to get my pre-order in as soon as possible, because I kind of anticipated that it was going to sell out really fast. But it worked out in the end, because now I've got it in my hands. So now let's move on and take a look at some of the more interesting things that I've got my hands on this month. Uh, so one of the things is actually a brand new console, and this is something that I don't purchase very often, so this is particularly special for me, and it is a PlayStation Vita. Uh, this costs £75 from eBay, and it's the original model of the Vita, in fact it's the 3G model of the Vita, so if I wanted to I could put a SIM card in there, but I'm not going to do that because it's a little bit pointless nowadays. Uh, but yeah, I think this is supposed to be the best model that you can get of the Vita. It's got like an OLED screen, uh, which I know the newer versions didn't have. Uh, so yeah, I'm finally a proud owner of a PlayStation Vita. Now, the main reason that I actually bit the bullet and got one of these is because I did a review of Super Monkey Ball Banana Splits, which is a PlayStation Vita exclusive game. And in order to access some of the mini-games and play them properly, I kind of needed to do it on the actual hardware. Uh, so that's the thing that really pushed me over the edge to go out and get one. Uh, but other than that, I have been wanting a Vita for a while. Uh, actually, primarily, the thing I want to do with it is use it as a portable PS1. Because uh, I know you can download PS1 games from the store, and they're actually pretty reasonably priced as well. But as far as actual Vita games go, I'm not actually that knowledgeable on that subject, so if anyone wants to recommend any Vita exclusive games that you think I might like, 
drop them in the comments because I'll be interested to give them a go. Now the last thing that I got my hands on this month is actually something that I've been wanting for a very long time but they keep going out of stock and it's the SNES controller for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I've got the NES controllers, I got them as soon as they came out, but with the SNES controllers I didn't dive in straight away and pick them up, so I actually missed out on the first lot of stock that they put onto the website, and I got a notification on my Switch just the other day saying that the final stock was coming in, so I kind of had to jump at it and get them before they're no longer available, or they go up in price so much that I'll never be able to afford one. This actually only came today on the day that I'm recording this video, so I've not had the opportunity to try it out too much yet, uh, but I did have a little go with it earlier on Super Mario All-Stars, and it seems to work really well, and it's just a more authentic way of playing the SNES games that are on the Switch. Obviously some people would probably say that this is a little bit pointless, because you can obviously just use a normal uh, either Joy-Con controller or a Pro controller, but I don't know, I just like to have that bit more authenticity when I'm playing games like that. But yeah, that about wraps everything up. There's the four pickups that I've got this month, some quite expensive stuff, hence why I've not got too many things. Uh, but one other thing that I did get this month is I placed my pre-order for the PS5. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll have one of those on the day it comes out. It's a little bit annoying how it comes out a little bit later in the UK, but so long as I get it in my hands on that day, I'll be happy. With the PS5, I'm also getting Spider-Man Miles Morales and Demon Souls. So I think as soon as I get the PS5 I'm going to be diving straight into the Demon Souls remake because I'm a huge fan of the original. But yeah, when I get the PS5 you can be sure that I'll do an unboxing and first impressions video on it, so subscribe if you want to see that at a later date. For now though, I think that about wraps up the video. It's been quite a short one today, but hopefully you found it at least a little bit entertaining. As usual, let me know down in the comments what your game pickups have been for this month, and subscribe to see more stuff like this coming soon, and give the video a like if you enjoyed it too. And until next time, bye!